What's up everybody, welcome back to Exotic Astrology again and I am not recording with my Full HD webcam today, I am in the library so I am recording with my Macbook webcam so please tolerate the audio and the video disturbances but I thought it is high time that I make this video. If you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you like this video click the thumbs up and watch my other videos especially the Bhagavad Gita series which I have started only for you people. <laughs> well, 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 what is today's topic? Today's topic is the most important of all topics. Today's topic is the number one topic. It should be the first topic which we should discuss but unfortunately I am discussing it very late but better late than never. Today's topic is importance of basics 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 and basics well in our journey of learning astrology we will be learning different techniques different secrets different placements of planets different houses different concepts like tithi vara then we have ashtagvarga then we have yoga we have karana we have nakshatra we have dashas we have different sorts of dasha systems, we have Shotari dasha, we have Chara dasha, we have Yogini dasha, we have Narayan dasha, so many other ways and then there are transits, my god, every month it's changing, sun is changing sign, every 15th of every month, then we have moon who is changing sign every two and a half days, <laughs> Mars is changing roughly near about 45 days to two months. Mercury changes in 20 days, Venus changes in 25 days, Jupiter changes in one year, Saturn changes in two and a half to three years, Rahu Ketu changes in 18 months roughly. And then we have different rules, different houses and so many other concepts. We have the Karakas, Jupiter is the Karaka for children, Venus is the Karaka for spouse, then we have Mars, Karaka for property, land, real estate, Moon is the Karaka for mother. There are so many things that we have to learn to integrate when we are becoming a serious student of astrology. But the challenge is how to become strong in astrology, yes. How many techniques should we know? Should we know exactly how to predict the day of the marriage or the day when you will get the promotion? Well, the secret to mastering astrology like any other branch in this world is to master the basics. For example, what all things does Jupiter represent? Do you know all of them? If you know, write in the comments. <laughs> Let me see how many of you know what exactly Jupiter represents. What is the difference between Jupiter, Sun and Ketu? All three represent spirituality. Then what is the difference? <laughs> Can you tell me what is the difference between Jupiter, Sun and Ketu? These three planets. Everybody uses them interchangeably. They say, oh, Sun is the significant of spirituality. Jupiter also is spirituality. And then Ketu is also there. <laughs> what is the difference between these three? Can you write in the comments? Let me see how much basics you know. And do not give me whimsical answers like, oh, sun is light, Jupiter is this, Ketu is that. Tell me the difference between Jupiter, sun and Ketu. Let me see how many of you can tell it. Do you exactly know what Mercury is? Mercury is your uncle. Mercury is your relatives, your friends. But then which, which relative? <laughs> Suppose you have two uncles. Then which one will you take? Or suppose if Mercury is well placed in your chart, does it mean that every uncle that you have, that they are very well to do, they are very good, does it mean like that? What about Venus? What does Venus signify? Does Venus signify only your wife for a man and the husband for a woman? Or does it signify your girlfriend or your boyfriend also? Or does it signify women in general? <laughs> what does Venus signify? 
what about your first relationship <laughs> what is the difference between venus and the seventh house seventh house means the seventh lord or a planet sitting there for example let me give you let me give you a question let me see how many of you can answer if venus for a man is placed in the sign of cancer suppose but mars is placed in his seventh house okay should i repeat venus is placed in the sign of cancer but mars is placed in the seventh house yes now see cancer is the sign see venus is in cancer so what you will say okay maybe the wife depending on the nakshatra either it's punar vasu prushya or ashlesha in cancer you will say that okay the wife can have traits of uh, traits of cancer yes she will be like a mother she will be very loving caring yes you can say all this she will be very white to look and she will gain weight after marriage <laughs> but then because mars gets debilitated in cancer so she will not have the martian traits but what if mars is sitting in your seventh house then what <laughs> so how will you know which planet you are supposed to see for what yes see there comes the basics suppose there are two malefics in your fifth house saturn and rahu is there in your fifth house and what if jupiter is in cancer in exaltation then what <laughs> will you have children or will you not have children let me see what is your knowledge <laughs> then there there you go suppose venus is exalted in pisces or it is in multiple in libra and suppose your seventh house has three malefics sun saturn and ketu my god then will you have a marriage or you will not have or because there are three planets you will have three marriages. what if venus is conjunct with jupiter ketu and saturn in any house in any sign then how many marriages will you have and if seventh house is empty <laughs> what if your 10th lord is very well placed but your sun is debilitated or it is in signs like gemini or aquarius or capricorn or taurus or virgo then what sir your 10th lord is exalted suppose and sun is badly placed what if sun is well placed but saturn is not well placed then what will the person be responsible or he will not be responsible <laughs> which is the planet that shows responsibility commitment duty structure is it sun or is it saturn there you see <laughs> you do not know the basics and without knowing basics of the karakas of the houses when we try to jump from here to there yes things are not going to work out that is why your predictions will be false and then you will create a bad name people will tell that astrology doesn't work it's all bogus it's nonsense it's rubbish it doesn't work no no it always works only thing is you do not know how to interpret i do not know how to interpret yes so therefore we should spend considerable time in reading the brihat parashar hora shastra which is the classic and by that we should learn the basics that is the first thing we should do what is the meaning of seventh lord placed in the 12th house does it mean your spouse will go away or you will lose the spouse or you will meet them in foreign lands or how is it how is it going to change yes what if 12th lord is in the 7th house what is the difference another question what is the difference between 12th lord in the 7th and 7th lord in the 12th house we know in both the cases there is a connection of foreign and marriage but what is the difference between 7th lord in the 12th and 12th lord in the 7th tell me the difference <laughs> which will happen first you will get married first or you go abroad or will you go abroad and then you get married tell me i will not leave you today <laughs> tell me which will happen first suppose your 10th lord is in the 5th house or fifth lord is in the 10th house what is the difference 
tell me. <laughs> Tenth Lord in the fifth, is it good or bad for career? Because fifth house is a trikon. Yes, it is supposed to be good. It is one of the Rajyogas exchange of a Kendra and a trikon. But also, eighth house is not good. And tenth house, if you count eight houses from there, you go to the fifth house. So it means fifth house is the death and rebirth of a job. So is it good or is it bad? <laughs> Placement of the tenth lord in the fifth house is good or is it bad? That's what I want to know. Yes. And what about placement of the fifth lord in the tenth house? Is it good or bad? We know. <laughs> or we are just hovering around. Oh my god, fifth lord is in the tenth. This person will do things related to education or creativity. But what if the tenth lord is placed in the third house? Or what if the tenth lord is placed in the second house? Then what? Do you know? <laughs> now what? Which is more important? The placement of a planet in a house or the lord? For example, if there is a malefic in the seventh house and if the seventh lord is in a great sign, in a great dignity, suppose in exaltation, yes. Then how will it be? For example, let me give you an example. Suppose somebody is a Capricorn ascendant, yes, and he has Mars in the seventh house. That means Mars is debilitated in the sign of Cancer, yes. And suppose Moon, yes, Moon is exalted in the sign of Taurus in the fifth house. Then will the person have challenges in marriage or not? And what if Venus is debilitated? <laughs> then what will you say, my dear sir? Oh my God, this is there, that is there, but I don't know what's the conclusion, right? What is the difference between tenants and house lords? Do you know that? You don't. <laughs> if you know, then please write it in the comments. I also want to know. What if your... Uh, Eighth house has too many benefits. Is it good to have benefits in the Dusthanas, the sixth house, eighth house, twelfth house? Or is it bad? Some people say it is great to have malefics in the third house, the sixth house, the tenth house, and the eleventh house. Is it true? <laughs> because third house is the house of courage. So when there's a malefic, they say the person is very courageous. Which also goes to tell me that. The person will have to show courage in this life. So, do you want to show courage? When will you show courage? When there are difficulties and challenges, right? Otherwise, you will not show courage. So, is it good to have a malefic in the third house? Is it good to have Ram there? <laughs> Malefics in the third house is very good. That is what they say, right? But is it true? That is for you to decide. What if a malefic is placed there in the third house? Do you know the result? Without knowing basics, or another basic, what is the meaning of Jupiter in the 12th house? What is the meaning of Jupiter in the 12th house? Does it mean that you will never have children? Because 12th house is the house of laws. But 12th house is also the house of spirituality. So maybe it is good for spirituality. But what if Jupiter is debilitated? Not so good, right? My God, so confusing. <laughs> There you see, I do not know anything about astrology. Yes, and we go on a rampage giving predictions. Okay, okay, maybe now your wife will be like this. She will be from this family, that family. But my dear sir, do you know how to interpret placement of house lords and placement of planets in a particular sign? For example, Jupiter in the sign of Virgo. What will be the results? Forget the house. Maybe maybe it's in the first house. What are the results of Jupiter in the sign of Virgo in the first house? Do you know the answer? Give me 10 answers of Jupiter in Virgo. Give me 10 answers of Jupiter in Libra. Is it good or bad? Or how, how do you define which is good or bad? People say that this is good, this is bad. Yes. Now, the question is, how do you define what is good bad? For example, 
for some people it may be very good if they see that the chart has challenges that means the person will learn a lot of lessons in life and he will be a strong person for another person he may say oh no 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 i don't want any challenges i i just want a easy going life so for him it is very good to have benefits in the third house for the other person of the first category it is very good to have malefics in third house yes because their definition of good and bad is different for one good means a easy going life and for the other good means a life with challenges which you overcome and then you become strong so there you see importance of basics so whenever you are talking of things in a black and white manner oh this is good this is bad is it always true or the question is is it always black and white the question is yes for example if jupiter is in capricorn is it always bad or there are some cases where it is not that bad also <laughs> venus exalted in the sign of pisces 28 degrees of revti nakshatra is it good for marriage or is it bad let me give you a hint which is the sign which is the moon trigon the house of venus or the office the prominent sign of venus it is taurus right no libra <laughs> yes moon trigon is libra how many houses is pisces from libra count 7 8 9 10 11 12 that means pisces is the sixth house from libra that means whenever venus is exalted it is not very happy from its moon trigon what does it mean that when venus is in pisces the person may have difficulties finding contentment in sexuality because sixth house is the house of celibacy Oh my god exalted venus i have to follow celibacy <sighs> my god i want a debilitated venus <laughs> jupiter exalted in cancer jupiter's moon trigon is which one sagittarius if you count from sagittarius cancer is the eighth house oh my god jupiter is exalted in the eighth house from its moon trigon rash it's a terrible placement but why is it exalted there ha huh? <laughs> why do you know why jupiter is exalted in cancer yes you do not <laughs> how can a planet be exalted in the sign which is eighth from its moon trigon sign moon trigon is what the planet is made of in jupiter venus the example we have they get exalted in the dusthanas from their moon trigon venus gets exalted in the Sixth house from its moon trigon, and Jupiter gets exalted in the eighth house from its moon trigon. What a terrible placement! Why has Parashara given exaltation? Do you know what is the meaning of exaltation? Exaltation means good, right? Just good. Good how? Which sense? What good? Define what is good. Well, that you don't know. Venus is exalted. Oh, great marriage! Yes, but then the person is suffering only. or maybe he still has a great marriage <laughs> but then it's not working right venus is maybe it's exalted in some other way right see full confusion so without knowing basics it is not very recommended that we go very high level very much techniques that is why many people are writing to me in the comments sometimes that why don't you do a video on uh, this that some very big lofty topic and my only request to everybody is please let us master the basics let us understand what is the meaning of placement of planets in kendra from each other what is the meaning of placement of planets in trikon from each other that is why i have made those two videos please go and watch it otherwise you will not understand how planets are sitting conjunction will not help you yes please go and watch those two videos only then you will understand how the planets behave why is a planet getting colored by another planet that you will only understand when you see those two videos okay so do not worry i will make videos there are thousands of videos to make do not worry i will make all of them till the time i am breathing you will keep getting uploads in youtube from my side unless there is a calamity in my life 
<laughs> till the time i am living i will continue making videos on spirituality and the gita and astrology do not worry about that but my concern is master the basics read the classics jatak pari ja yes you should read that book it's a beautiful book bphs mriyat parashar hora shastra and then great other books only by seeing videos in youtube you cannot master basics it is simply not possible you can introduce yourself to astrology through youtube that's not wrong but you cannot master the basics because you don't get those things here and even if i try to make videos sometimes explaining the basics there's a video which i made on the seventh house in the kama trikon yes and then somebody has commented that you have given lots of unnecessary information i don't know who is that lady <laughs> seriously you think seventh house is the house of marriage well you are so wrong it is not the house of marriage it is the house of desire that is why it is a kama house first understand desire first understand what tatva desire is it is vayu tatva why is third house 11th house in trikon to the seventh house first understand that then you go and give predictions on marriage giving predictions okay today you will get married tomorrow you will get married do you know what is the meaning of marriage you do not know and you are starting to give predictions on what is marriage so the predicament is even if i make videos and i explain there are some people who say okay your videos are too long it's too big actually you should shorten it keep it precise no precision here if you want precision then go to some other channel you will not get it here <laughs> the only thing i would say to you is get well soon because to learn anything in detail if you need a solid basis you need to effort you need to give effort you need to invest time and energy just because by seeing a video on seventh house for 7 minutes you will not understand what seventh house is and not that by seeing my video on seventh house for 12 minutes or the kama trikon for 30 minutes you will understand seventh house you will never understand what seventh house is do not search for keywords 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 okay seventh house means two keywords three keywords you go understand what seventh house is what kama house is that you understand first what is the origin of desire that you understand my dear sir after that you see when are you going to get me so learn the basics without that do not go in a racing car you will reach the dead end i am saying yes that is it from my side even this video has become very long and if you have survived till the end <laughs> and i would congratulate you and whatever questions i have asked you then i would expect that at least something you can comment it below okay or if you have any other questions then please let me know in the comment section okay until next time if you are new then subscribe to it and if you like this video click the thumbs up okay wish you good night bye bye see you